So when it comes to desktop applications for managing my code commits, GitHub Desktop is one of my favorite applications. And that's what we are going to discuss today. Thanks for joining in and this is the day two of the Teching On 2021 series. So if you're ready, let's begin. Hello and Merry Christmas to everyone watching this. As I already told you before, when it comes to desktop applications for managing my code commits, GitHub Desktop is one of my favorite applications. And the most important aspect of using this is that it makes your life a whole lot easier. So apart from adding attributions to the contributor, checking out branches and showing the git diff in a clean way, it also helps us with merge conflicts. Yes, it does. And I know there are a lot of other applications such as source tree that can help you with similar options. GitHub's clean interface makes it my go-to application. So now let's go ahead and install GitHub desktop. But before that, if you haven't installed the git bash command line, you can do that as well. I have made a separate video on that. So the link is on the top right corner and the description. So please make sure that you check that out as well. So when we talk about GitHub desktop, so GitHub Desktop is an open source electron based GitHub application, which is written in TypeScript and which uses React as well. Electron, if you haven't used it before, is an open source software framework developed and maintained by GitHub themselves. And the magical part about that, it allows for the development of desktop GUI applications using web technologies such as HTML5, CSS and JavaScript. Fascinating, isn't it? But that's not what we are here for. We are here to learn how to use GitHub Desktop. So let's get started with that. So to install GitHub Desktop, just type GitHub Desktop in Google and you will come back to the site that we just saw right now. So based on your operating system, either you can choose between Mac operating system or Windows and you can download the installer for yourself. Because we are using Windows here, I'll go ahead and click on the downloads for Windows button. That is for the 64-bit one that we have here. So just click on that. Okay, so once you have installed GitHub Desktop, this is the first screen that you will get and this is the place where it all begins. So now the first objective for us is to sign in to our GitHub account so that we can clone the repositories, we can manage the code that we have, we can commit the code, we can make a pull request, we can actually create branches and everything. So, so the first step for us is to sign in to our GitHub account. So just click on file, you will see options, just click on that. And here you have the account section where you have the sign in option. So you can just sign in for now with the GitHub account that you have and it will redirect you to the browser. So you can just click on continue with browser. So once you have signed in, you will get the repository list that you already have. So once you have signed in, you can go back to options again and you will see the username that you have. So that is the username that I have, Pytholic. So that's the one that I'm currently using. And when it comes to integration, actually, you can integrate it with Visual Studio Code. You have the option to integrate it with Atom, Sublime Text, Notepad++, and you can as well integrate it with the command terminals that you have, command prompt, partial, partial core, Windows terminal as well. And there is one more option that you have here is Git. So basically, this is the email address that you have for the GitHub repository that you're currently holding. And there's the username that you have and the default branch for new repositories that you have is mainly targeted to main or you can choose it to master or any other one that you want. And when it comes to appearance, you can choose the light theme if you like it <laughs> or you can automatically switch the theme to match the system theme. So if I just click on that, I already have a white theme. So it's just sticking into the white theme prompts. So this is the notification that you get whenever you're trying to remove repositories or discarding changes or force pushing. So whenever you perform any of these operations, you will get a confirmation dialog so that you can get the option to either move forward or you can just cancel that. When it comes to advanced options, so if I have changes and I switch branches, what should I do? So if you have any changes and you are currently switching the branches, then it will ask you like where I want to switch the changes to. So if you want to keep it in the current branch and stash it, you can do that as well. And always bring my changes to the new branch. So it will bring all your changes that you have in the current branch to the new branch. Or else you can as well stash and leave my changes to the current branch. So it's also fine. So you can just leave your changes in the current branch that you have and you can switch to the new branch. The background updates periodically fetch and refresh status of all the repositories. You can do that you can by just selecting this option. So it will periodically it will try to update the status of your repositories. 
So that's about the options. Just cancel it. So if you wish to create a tutorial repository, you can just click on this. If you want to clone a repository from the internet, you can do this. If you want to create a new repository on your hard drive, you can do this. Or if you want to import any existing repositories that you have, you can do that as well. Or what you can do is you can choose one of the repositories that you already have in your Bitbucket account. So if I have to clone any repository, then I can just click on clone a repository from the internet. And here I can just go to the URL section. And that is where I have to enter the URL for the Bitbucket repository. So this is the repository that I have. And if I just click on code, I'll get the HTTPS URL. I'll just click on the clipboard icon and I'll copy this URL and I'll go back and I'll paste it. So if suppose the repository name already exists, then it'll throw error. So make sure that make sure that you have a fresh install or if you want to make a clone, then you can just keep it in a separate folder as well. So now that you have entered the URL, so it is allowing us to clone it in the path that I have like documents, GitHub, Pytholic. This is the name of my user and this is the name of the repo link. And I can just click on clone or else I can choose any of the folders that I want and I can iterate to that and I can clone it there as well. So let's see, we'll change this and I'll just keep it in the desktop and I'll just create a folder here for myself and I'll just click on clone and it'll clone it for me. So now it's cloning the repository. So now that the repository is cloned and you will be able to see the cloned repository that we have here. So I'll go back to the desktop, GitHub desktop. So now if you can see here, we have uh, the list of repositories there is only one, so it is showing only one. But if you have a plenty of repositories, it will show a list of those repositories that you have. And if suppose you want to add, you can add it from here as well by cloning a repository or you can create your new repository or you can add an existing one. And uh, the next thing that I wanted to show was this one. So the current default branch that you have set is master. So it is choosing this by default. So this is the default branch that we have set. So if I want to switch the branch also, I can just click on the branch here and I can switch. And the most important part for us is like while a developer, if I want to check any changes that have been previously made, I can just click on the history button that I have here and I can see the changes that have been made to the code and who has made the changes and what is the difference or the diff that has been made. So I can just right click on this and I can copy the file path or I can show it in Explorer, open it in Visual Studio Code and edit that. So let's suppose I'm working on new feature now. So what I can do is I can just click on new branch. So mostly we create a branch from master itself, but let's suppose I want to create it from developer also. I can do that. But now I'll just click on master and I'll create a new branch. So this is a test branch, test branch. And I can just give the name as test branch and I can create the branch here. This did not have any changes. It did not prompt me that should I save my changes or should I stash my changes. It just directly created the branch. And now it is on the test branch now that I just created. And if I want, I can just publish the branch, right? If you want to check now, you will not have the branch here. I will just refresh this for you. And I'll just show you that there are only two branches here. So don't worry about that. So it will not be visible to the public. So now what happens is let's suppose I want to make any changes. So I'll go to the history. Let's suppose I want to make changes to this file itself. So I can just click on open in Visual Studio and it'll open the Visual Studio for me. And here I can make another change. So I can just type testing demo and I can just save it. Go back to the GitHub desktop. You will see the change here. If it is not comfortable right now, I can just switch the theme so that it is visible for you. So now what you can do is you can just see that we have made a change here. And this is just a simple example that I'm going to show you. But if suppose you're working in real time, there will be multiple files that you would have changed and uh, you would want a simple solution to view the differences, isn't it? And this is where you have made the change and this is the diff that you have here. So let's suppose I want to commit it. So previously, as we have known that if we want to commit any uh, code that we have, we have to just first add it and then we have to add the commit message and then we have to just commit the code and we have to push it, isn't it? So now what I can do is I can just add the message. And there's the change. I am happy with that. I can add a description. Or I can just add a co-author if I just click on this and I can add the name of the co-author as well. Add the commit message and I'll just commit the code. So 
okay so if you face that problem you can just switch the uh, integration to windows terminal and it will work so if you face that problem so if you don't then it's fine then you can just click on publish the branch and it will commit the code for you as well so now if you see this arrow it means that the changes have been committed locally to the repository but it hasn't been pushed so this is the button that tells you that this commit has not been pushed to the remote repository and that is our goal isn't it so what we are going to do we are just going to click on publish branch and along with that our code will also be pushed and i'll just click on fetch origin once again to see any changes for incoming changes we have to confirm that by going to the remote repository as well you can see the test branch has been added and updated by python like a minute ago and here actually it is telling me that there is one changes that i am having so this this commit has ahead of master by one commits so what does it mean it means that there is a commit that the master does not have and the test branch has so if i have to create a pull request why should i use this i'll go to the github desktop click on pull requests so it is telling me that would you like to create a pull request from this current branch so if you click on this it will take you to this page itself where you can create the pull request and i can just create the pull request i am the administrator i have the full access i can just merge the pull request now yes the pull request is successfully merged you can go back to the code go back to the master branch go to recognize go to engine.py and you will see this code has been committed now so there is one more thing that i told you that you can resolve merge conflicts as well on this one so merge conflict is a situation that happens when there are changes to the same file or changes to the same file and the upstream changes and the downstream changes are conflicting with each other so let's suppose this is the file that i have right now and uh, in the local uh, repository and i'll just change some of the attributes here local changes okay my conflict local changes this is what i have added right now so now you can see that we have the change what i'll do is i'll go to the repository again i'll go to the test branch and i'll go to engine.py and i'll edit the file here so currently this is the line that is there locally we have made the changes like this so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy this just look at this very carefully okay so i can just edit that here as well so to create the merge conflict this is my remote changes okay i have edited this file now what i can do i can just commit the changes so now on the same line there are two different things so this is the local one and this is the remote one okay so the same line has been changed in both the places so the people who are working on the local changes don't know that there has been a change that has been made in the remote branch already on the same branch that they are working so what will happen there will be a merge conflict now we'll see what happens here so i'll just add a comment here adding comment and i'll just commit to this so now i have committed the changes so both the places we have the change now and the only thing that is pending for me is to just push it to the origin branch or the remote branch so when i click on push origin you should see a merge conflict yes so desktop is unable to push commits to this branch because there are commits on the remote that are not present on your local branch fetch these new commits before pushing in order to reconcile them with your local commits so that is what it is telling so now if i fetch the changes it will try to pull the changes now you see we have a merge conflict so now it is giving us an option to open it in visual studio code and resolve the conflict and that is what we are going to do so now you got the point on how useful these things can be and these things are very tricky this is just a one line change and if suppose there are multiple line changes then you are going to have a hell of a difficulty resolving this conflict but i have used pycharm before and they also provide a very good way to actually resolve merge conflicts where you can accept the changes or you can reject the changes or you can upstream your changes but that depends on what you are currently using but we are going to discuss here today for git desktop so we will stick to that okay so now what you can do is you can just open the visual studio code or sorry the code in the visual studio code and here you will see the changes so there are two things that you have to understand here there are incoming changes and there are current changes okay so incoming changes are the one that are coming from the remote branch and the current changes are ones that are in the local branch itself 
so you can see this is the current branch that you have the current changes so so testing github features for demo my conflict local changes there's the one that i had added locally and this is the one that is incoming so i can accept the current change or i can accept the incoming change or i can accept both or i can compare both of them okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to resolve the conflict and i'm going to accept the incoming changes so i can just click on incoming changes or accept incoming changes but if you want to just accept it you can just delete these lines you can just delete the line and that way also you can resolve the conflict okay but if you just click on accept incoming changes also it will try to remove these lines so if i just click on accept incoming changes it will remove the line that i had previously the local changes so it will just keep the line that has come from the remote changes okay so i'll just do a control z to show you once again so if i want to resolve this conflict i can just drag this and i can select these things and i can just delete it and i can delete this line as well to resolve the conflict and i can just save it so this also resolves the conflict for me so now there are no conflicts remaining i'll go back and i'll just control z okay and i'll accept the incoming changes this way also i'll save it no conflicts remaining now i can just commit the merge or abort the merge for me i have to commit the merge because there is a changes that i have so i can just commit merge and i can push the origin that's it so it will tell you now that you have committed a merge for your branch so there is the merge commit merge branch test branch of this one and that is what you have right now so this was the previous change that we had so this is one more option that uh, we get with github desktop and the other one that i wanted to discuss was if i want to add a local repository also i can do it i can just click on add local repository and i can choose the path okay so for that what i'm going to do is i'm just going to remove this if you just select this also move this repository to recycle bin it will delete the whole content so don't do that so now you can just click on add existing repository from your hard drive or you can just click on file and add local repository yeah we'll do that because most of the people are confused so add local repository and you can just choose the one that we were currently working with this one so this was in my desktop so i can just double click on that and i can select the folder so once you have selected the folder you can just click on add repository and it'll add the local repositories for you and as well if you want to create a new repository also you can do that you can just click on new repository you can give the name of the repository my test repo and it will create it in the desktop or any location that you want you can initialize this repository with a readme file as well and you can just add options on what you want to add them in the git ignore file and you can add git ignore and you can add a, so you can add the license also it can be apache license whatever you want and you can create the repository okay so now once you have multiple repositories you will be able to see this so this is actually showing as other repository because it is not configured with your account so this is the other one this is the one with the username of pytholic and if suppose you want to publish the repository you can do this you can just click on publish it will get published and this was a very simple way for me to showcase how github desktop can help you and if it does help you then you can make use of it i am not going to earn anything this this video is not sponsored anyways please make use of anything that you like and i felt this is one of the application that i have been using since a very long time so i thought i will share this with you and thanks everyone for joining in on the day 2 of the teching on 2021 series that we have for the whole week that we are going to have like i'll be posting a new video every day till jan 4th so please make sure that you subscribe to the channel to watch awesome content like this and if you have any recommendations if you have any feedback then please make sure that you put them in the comment section below and if you want to talk and if you want to be a friend then we can be friends on instagram the twitter handle and the instagram handle are given in the description and on the video as well i think and that's all for today's episode of teching on 2021 i'll meet you in the next session hopefully tomorrow and until then it's pythonic signing off